Greetings gamers, Fayo here and in this video I am going to try to help you figure out some of the mechanics for Bleak Faith Forsaken, a game that implements a lot of interesting ideas but sometimes doesn't do the best of jobs in explaining how you can utilize them. So for someone starting now there are many questions I believe like how do you level up? How do you upgrade gear? Why do I feel so weak? What is this spastic thing on my left doing exactly? What's that homunculus application that I got a tutorial about but I don't understand what it is? I will try to explain all these things and then some in this vid so I hope I help you understand what this game is all about. I'll call to action for you to sub like share hit the notification bell to be notified about the floods and streams i intend to stream this so stick around for more let's get to the meat and potatoes first and foremost how does leveling up in this game work well there is none there is no leveling up in this game the stats that you see here strength agility intelligence and constitution are only affected by the gear you are wearing and other parameter altering criteria like perks and augments and so on and so forth so i have 10 strength 8 agility 5 intelligence and 7 constitution if i go into my inventory and unequip everything You see that everything is at 5, 5 being the starting stats, it's a balanced quality 5 on all build and there is no differentiation. If I go into my inventory and start equipping stuff, we'll see that Citadel Warrior Helmet gives me 1 strength, 15 stamina points. By the way, everything is in one tab. I know it's not the best implementation, but it is what it is. And then for the chest piece, I go Citadel Warrior Chest, 1 Strength, 1 Constitution. Citadel Warrior Gauntless, 1 Strength, 15 Max Flux Points. That's like your focus, your mana, call it what you will. And then for the boots, I go Citadel Warrior Leg Guards, 1 Strength, 1 Constitution. And you pretty much get the stats I was using. You have... A cape slot, you have an amulet slot, and you have two ring slots. So you'll be getting a lot of rings throughout the game. What I'm going with is uh, the ring of gluttony that you get early on. Every time you pick up something it heals you for a small amount and go for the ring of potential to have additional flux points. I didn't use a pauldron, let's use a pauldron as well, let's use this, yeah, and now we're full. Now we have 11557. So all the quote-unquote leveling you'll be doing stats-wise is tied to your gear, so you can imagine you'll be getting a lot of gear and much better gear later on. Now for the perks, Every time you have one of those crystals at the top left that I have zero of now, you can pick one of the perk modifiers. These are permanent, will not be removable later on. You pick one and you commit to it and make a build this way. Okay. Some of these are very, very interesting. Like let's say vampirism adds 30% flat life still from possible pool of leech up to 10% of your maximum stat per instance of leech from all damage and doubles the amount of existing life still from your weapons it's nuts this is insane or for example the tinkerer mastery one belt max limit 40 percent effectiveness of all restored consumables and an extra belt max limit once the handler gains the ability to upgrade to mark four there are some penalties as well like faithful reduces your attributes by 20 percent this is you're gonna make it harder on yourself subsequent playthroughs but this is the one customization option that really ties into a more traditional kind of leveling. Then you go abilities, 
you will need these red gems at the top left of which I have zero now and you can have two at any given time that you can place in quick slots which I will explain in a second so this include various things like uh, you can see here dashing backwards and leaving caltrops that enemies will be walking over and taking damage and getting slowed or dashing forward and causing damage to enemies you pass through if you see jittery video here it's not YouTube's fault the initial showing of this tutorial vid usually is a bit jittery and then it loads normally and it's fine so with this you tailor your character a bit more but stats as I said are tied to your gear okay now let's talk about the primary actives especially if you have been playing on a controller you will be wondering how the hell do I use the ability of this weapon for example the one that I'm using here to make this more believable and understandable and to make sure you don't think I'm talking out of my ass here I'm gonna use the very first bosses weapon the force art now the force art is a excellent arm you get it pretty early on you get it by pretty much defeating the first boss so you can do attacks by the way there's distractibility in the environment which is a great surprise considering what corners had to be cut in order for this game to run the way it does it has very interesting art direction the jeep PU implementation is good, it doesn't really hog too many resources, but some of the texture work is a bit iffy, but that is fine, and I have uh, it on good authority that the devs are working very very hard to improve the game. And these are your hard attacks, so none of this is the ability of the weapon, right? So what you have to do is pick one of your slots in your X-square or your Y-triangle, hold it down and rotate to the ability you want to map, let's say the ability of the false start. And now with Y, I can use this ability and then of course it initiates its cold down and you have to wait until it's ready to use again. That can be confusing and especially on a controller you're pretty much sacrificing one slot from the get-go just to have your active ability usable okay it can be streamlined i believe and i think the devs will give it an honest chance when it comes to streamlining the controls with the controller because many people have had issues with it and honestly i shouldn't have to waste a belt slot just because i want to play with a controller games like this have been played with controllers since time immemorial i'm all for trying new things but they're so close to implementing an eye perfect system that I don't see why these things just went unnoticed. The same way you'll be able to utilize your abilities as well, like power armor. We got power armor here. So if I want power armor, I again place it in a slot. I activated with Y, but now with Y, of course, I cannot use the weapon art. I have to swap it back in this slot. So these are the very, very, very basics. Let's ask the important question now. What's happening with the gear? Why is the gear always staying the same? So once you reach this area, block 6174, that is the central hub of the game world, I'm teleported here again. There will be this automaton here called the Handler. She will tell you some things that might sound like gibberish and then she will be willing to do pretty much two things for you. One is upgrade your gear and the other one is manufacture crystals. Crystals will be manufactured by finding the recipes around the world and upgrading will be available according to a certain series of criteria first and foremost if you see handle synchronization at the top left you can see that there is a circle with five nodes in only two are lit up which means that this handler here 
at this point in the game can only upgrade things up to level 2. You can find things beyond level 2, but she will not be able to progress any further. So if you see my Citadel Warrior Helmet, I cannot upgrade it any further. But if I go to, let's say, the Tire Iron, I can upgrade it. If I click X, it will ask me if I want to upgrade. Of course, I do not want to upgrade this piece of poo-poo. And I'm not going to, I'm just explaining how it works. If I go to this piece of gear, the Technomancer Helmet, I can upgrade it as well. What does that do for you? It increases the stats, which is pretty much explanatory, but the mark numerical below the damage icons is going to increase and it will open a socket up to 5 sockets. In these sockets, you can embed crystals. Okay, so you can embed crystals, place crystals in the armor, and every crystal does one of two things. If it's placed on armor, it will give you a stat most of the time, and if it's placed in a weapon, it will give you some sort of benefit like lifesteal or critical chance, or weapon weight will cause more stagger and so on, and so on. Forth. So for a long duration after starting the game, you'll be able to upgrade only to plus two. I know because I've been playing for the longest of times throughout this day. But eventually you will feel stronger and the character will benefit from all these upgrades. Consider that you are basically wearing Five pieces of armor with five slots is okay. So you can gain at the lowest tier of crystals five points of a stat in each one of your armor pieces. I suppose you'll be able to get stronger crystals that will give you plus twos, plus threes, plus fours, plus fives. So increasing your stats to an amount that makes sense won't be as difficult as it initially seems. Also, if you click details here, it has a pretty good explanation. For example, strength, base, weapon damage, critical weapon damage, reduces weight penalties, caps at 45, reduces penalties of great weapons, speed caps at 45. You don't have to guess, like in certain other games of this ilk, where's the soft cap, where's the hard cap? It says the cap is 45 and the cap is 45 and that's pretty much it. It will also explain every single one of the stats, like Entropy, current explanation is undiscovered, please proceed with playthrough. Some of these things are not available because you have not experienced them yet, but when it comes to stamina recovery, amount of stamina recovered per second shows as green outline behind stamina bar. Current green outline counts towards current stamina count, so explain what your stamina is in case you need an explanation about that. Now about how you traverse, as you can see I can free walk right now if I pull my weapon out. I turn into this uh, strafing moveset. Okay, so how does this work exactly? When you're searching and traversing, you want to have the weapon on your back. You can also run indefinitely when the weapon is on your back. If you pull out your weapon, you're expending stamina by running. Okay, you want the weapon to be on your back when you're jumping, climbing the ladders and all that good stuff. Combos. Now, combos are interesting in this game. They take a cue from uh, Lords of the Fallen, believe it or not. And what it states is, if you time them correctly... As you can see, the stamina I'm expanding is nothing, is minute. And I can keep hammering for as long as I'm inputting correctly. Friends of the Arkham series of the Batman games might remember that there was a perk there which stated that if your timing was good, you dealt double damage per blow. Here, if your timing is good, you have optimal DPS because your attacks come out in a string and, of course, you expend less stamina. For the heavies, it might not look as an actual chain, but it also helps with the stamina and the stringing together of more attacks. So if you do that, you can be sure that you'll get the best possible DPS. Okay, so the homunculus now. The homunculus is an interesting concept. Let me go a bit further away. 
you will get a tutorial at some point saying that you can place a homunculus and you will be wondering what that is. The button that will be shown on your screen if you're using a controller will also not be the correct button. What you need to do if you're traversing and you haven't touched the controls on the controller is hold on your use button. It's detecting hostiles nearby. Give me a sec here. Okay, so we took care of the hostiles who are sitting on top of their corpses. I'm holding the button. And now I place the homunculus and I receive the homunculus Mirage case. That means it's the container for our Mirage homunculus. What does it do? This cannot teleport you to other areas, but it acts as a self-placed respawn point okay so if I respawn I jump and then I die because I use the jump button to verify the command of course I am at the homunculus okay and you can remove the homunculus in your options menu you just remove it it's gone you don't take it back that way in order to take it back you need to go to an actual homunculus and as you approach it it will save your game and you'll get homunculus mirage back in your inventory so what happens when you die when you die your respawn at the latest respawn point there is no penalty okay there is actually no penalty for dying this is not a souls like the fact that it has stamina might seem like a Souls-like to people, but this is not a Souls-like. It's a dungeon crawler that implements some of the mechanics that made certain more recent games, if we can call them recent, starting with Demon Souls in 2009, so popular. It uses stamina, dodges, blocks, parries, and all that good stuff, but it's by no means a Souls-like. It's a dungeon crawler, and a pretty good one at that, but... You will be hard pressed to understand all these mechanics without digging really deep. Another thing I want to talk about is weapon swapping and what they do. If you get bows or staves or whatever, you can place them on your own hand. You draw your weapon, then you switch your swap weapon button and you have a staff, let's say, or a bow. And you can attack with this weapon and you will consume flax. Depending on what weapon it is, it will have different attacks and different effects. When your flux is depleted, you can still use it as a melee weapon and chain attacks with it. Okay. Then it'd be a good idea to swap back to a melee arm, but who am I to judge? I'm just relaying the info here for your benefit. Anything else from this point onward is up to implement to experimentation sorry because the world is huge there is very little info about where you should be going usually this game is playing the vein of if you're meeting bosses you're going the right way not always the case in the case of this game because i ended up getting myself in quite a pickle a few hours back because i ended up in an area for which i was woefully under leveled but keep improving the gear Keep improving your understanding of the game and you will make it just fine. Another thing that the game tells you, and I just want to underline here, consumables are not Estus flasks. They are not recovered when you touch the homunculus. Also, your flux and health does not recover when you touch the homunculus. What you can do is click respawn. This will net you a death, of course. But this is in a control environment. When you respawn, your flux will be full, your health will be full, and your stamina will be full, and you are good to go. Don't ask me why it's programmed like this. If it forces you to die to replenish your HP and FP, it's gonna be a loss we'll have to be willing to take in order to get our traversal to move forward smoother. 
If you have any other questions, leave them in the comment section below. I tried to cover as much as possible. That's why this is a, such a long ass vid. Hope it helped. As I said in the beginning, sub like, share, hit the notification bell. I will be making more content for this game. I will be covering its updates. I am pretty sure there will be a lot of them because something's been dying out. But these guys are really working their asses off. As I said, I have a good authority. So, sub like, share, hit the notification bell. And until next time, be well, stay frosty and always strive for perfection. Cheers.